start the class. Last time it didn't uh, work, so hopefully today it's going to work. I, I might do a makeup for last class, but I'm not sure. We'll see maybe this weekend if you miss the class. So the test is on Tuesday, but you have to come in class. Okay, there is there is class. Not because we have a test that uh, you should not come. There is class. It's, it's just a, a take home. Homework is like a take home homework. It's I think it's like it's not twenty percent. It's like fifteen or twelve percent of the grade. I forgot or ten percent, and it's one hour, one hour test, right? No, 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 not reviewing, but it's a it's an hour test, one hour. Okay, you should not take more than one hour, but I will uh, open it for uh, five hours, right? From seven to eleven fifty nine. So to accommodate everyone. So you're going to have uh, conceptual questions very much like the pop quiz. That's why you can see the pop quiz using your uh, right hand and uh, the fingers, things like this, and a few numerical questions. And um, so you can, you can use the slides. You don't have to memorize anything. And the topics are magnetism and source of magnetism. Okay, so conceptual question, a few numerical question, and it should not take more than one hour. And it's open, open notes. Okay, so it's not proctor. So my son has to do it online with a proctor, and he has to pay like four or four dollars, I think. So you see, you don't have to pay anything, and it's not proctor. Okay, so I, I just uh, want to go back to here, and uh, this one is a nice application uh, simulation to understand. You see, that's how we're going to generate electricity. But you see that in that case, we are inducing DC or AC. AC, okay? It's alternating voltage, alternating current. Because you are inducing a voltage, you're going to induce a current, but you see the current is going to flow in one direction, it's going to flow in the other direction. Because the idea is always to oppose whatever gave rise to it. Now you see that when the loop is in this direction, the magnetic field here is zero. Okay, because there is no, should do it like this here. The, the flux is zero because there is no magnetic field lines poking through this area here. Then it's gonna turn. So that that's the angle theta, the amount by, by which it's turning. So it's like it was here. And now it's it's gonna have an orientation relative to the magnetic field. That's that's what is changing with time. It's the angle that matters here. So the orientation of the loop is changing with time relative to the magnetic field. And then as it goes here, you have a maximum field. So what matters is the change. So when you have a maximum value here for the magnetic field, you see that almost it does not change, right, much. So the voltage induced will be equal to zero. Then when you get to zero magnetic field from here, and then a little bit past, you have a lot of change. So that's when you're going to have a maximum of voltage induced. But what matters is that you understand that to induce a voltage, you need three things. You need a magnetic field, you need a conductor, and you need a motion. Something has to move. Either the magnetic field has to change, the area of the conductor can change, or the orientation of the conductor relative to the magnetic field has to change. So that what you are you are you are seeing here, that's that's how it's done in power plant. So for example, here it says six rotation per minute. So if I ask you for a test, that what what is that? That's that is the angular frequency, how fast it's spinning. 
So here you have six rotation per minute. So in one minute, it's going to go around six times. If you want to convert that in rad per second, so how are you going to do it? So we have here, we have six rotation per minute. How are you going to convert that in rad? One rotation is how much rad? Two pi. Very good, okay? One cycle, one cycle, one going around once. It's the same thing as two pi. So you go around. It's the same thing as 360 degrees. It's the same thing as one revolution. It's the same thing as one rotation. So if you want to convert that, you're going to say this is 6 times 2 pi over 60, because in one minute you have 60 seconds. Okay, so that's going to be um, 2 pi divided by 10. That's going to be uh, 2 pi is uh, like 6 something, 6.28. So it's going to be 0 0.63, right? Is that right? Rad per second. Am I right or my head is hurt so much that I cannot think anymore? Is that right? Because 3.14 is pi, 6.28 is 2 pi, and you divide by 10, so it's 0 0.63. Is that right? So 0 0.63 rad per second. Okay, thank you. So this is called the the speed, the angular speed, the 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 the, the rotational speed, right? Mm -hmm. It's also called the angular frequency because it's it's going to tell you how fast it's spinning. So if I want the regular frequency, so the frequency. Right, that's going to be the number of cycles per one second, right? So that's going to be what? How, how many rotations in one second? So you have six rotation. So six rotation in 60 minutes, right? So it's going to be what? Okay. As thank you, second. So it's going to be 0 0.1, right? Rotation per second, or 0 0.1 cycles per second. So that means the frequency is 0 0.1 hertz in that case. Is that clear? That, what does it mean? It means that the electricity here, the, if, you, if you connect that to a light bulb, if it was a light bulb instead, okay, so it's going to go on, off, on, off, 0 0.1 times per second. How fast is going to be turning on and off? Okay? So the... You, you, you can also find, did I do it right? How many cycles? So it's 60 per, so it, it, it goes uh, very slow, but it's fine. So the period, the period is the number of seconds, the number of seconds uh, per cycle. So we are reviewing. So the number of seconds will be uh, 60 seconds for six rotations or cycles. So that's going to be 10, 10 seconds. So it's super slow. So that means it takes 10 seconds, right? So it's going to be on, and the trois, quatre, cinq, six, eight, eight, nine, this, off, and the trois, quatre, cinq, six, eight, eight, nine, this, and so forth and so on. So it, it's going very slowly. So the, the point is it, how fast the loop or, or the rotor is moving inside the magnetic field is going to give you the frequency of, of the AC. Okay?
So I can, of course, look, look at that graph here. I can make it go faster. And you see that now the period is getting smaller and the frequency is getting higher. And it's going to switch from plus, minus, minus, plus, and so forth and so on. Okay, is that clear? That's how it works. So in that case, just, just the parentheses here. Uh, from from the outlet, from the outlet here that we have here in the wall, the wall outlet here. So you have a hot wire and you have a autumn path and here you have the ground. So the way it works, it's going to be, this one is going to be plus, minus, and then plus, minus, and minus plus and plus, minus and minus, plus. It's going to do that 60 times a second. So from, from the wall here, we're going to have a frequency of 60 hertz. Okay, so it means 60 times a second. Okay, so I hope it's clear. Uh, what else did I want to tell you? Okay, so what do you think the EMF, the maximum EMF depends on what? Just by looking at that. Look, 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 look. So the maximum EMF, it's going to be that value here, right? As I increase the speed, the rotational speed, what's going to happen to the maximum EMF? Increase. It does not stay the same. It's going to increase, right? It makes sense. As I'm going to move faster, the, the 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 flux is going to change faster with time and remember the emf is not proportional to the flux is proportional to the change in flux the rate at which the flux is changing with time so you see as it's going slower slower you know the rate the the rate at which the flux is changing decreases so I get a smaller EMF. So we know that the EMF maximum, maximum will be proportional to the speed, the rotational speed, okay, or, or the angular frequency. What else it depends on? If you look at this, it also depends on. Very good, the area. Who said that? I don't know who said that, but it's correct. The area, what else? Here we have one loop. What do you think is going to happen if we have like a solenoid? It's, it's going to increase, right? Because you, you, keep, you have two loops, you're going to have twice the EMF. EMF, three loops, three times the EMF, four loops, four times the EMF. So it depends on the number of loops. And we are missing something. What else is going to depends on the magnetic field very good right if you increase the magnetic field of course the number of lines the number of lines it's going to be larger right so it's going to change uh, um, the, the, the the change in, in the magnetic field lines will increase as well so you see you don't have to memorize anything it makes sense it has to depend on the speed it depends on the area, because if you increase the area, you have more magnetic field lines poking through. The number of loop, because each loop has induced voltage, so you keep adding the induced voltage and the magnetic field. Okay, so that will be the maximum EMF. And what we call the RMS, RMS, that will be what you measure with a voltmeter. If you shove that into the plug, that will be some kind of average here. And it just equals to the square root. No, it's going to be the maximum divided by square root of two, like, like we've seen before. Now, you see that it's changing with time, okay? So it's a sine wave. So here it's a cosine, it's a cosine.
because at zero you have a maximum. It doesn't matter if it's cosine or sine, you know, it's still a sine wave. So I'm going to hide the equation here. It's going to be that the EMF induced equals to the maximum value, which depends how fast it's spinning, the area, the number of loops, B. And here I'm just going to put sine. And here, when you have a sine function, you always, always have 2 pi, always, t, always. And here you have the period, always. We've seen that last time. I think it's in the pop quiz. 2 pi over t, what is it? 2 pi is in rad. t is in second. Okay, so it means rotation per second, and that's going to be your, what's rad per second? Yes, it's going to be your omega. Does it make sense? So that means your EMF is going to be the maximum, and B sine omega t. And I, I have a question like this for the, pop quiz, right? So for example, let's look at the pop quiz very quick. Uh, not giving you answer, but for example, if you have something like this, you see it's a sine wave. Can you, no, no, I, I don't like this one. I, I like that one. Okay, let's, let's, let's look at this one. Can you give me its equation? How can I have this equation here? So what's the max? I got three, right? So I try to write with a eraser, it's gonna not going to work. So three, maximum three. I know it's a sign. And here you always have two pi and t. And here you always have the period. And what is the period? What's the time for one cycle here? Can you look at the graph? 50, okay. That's one cycle, 50. It's easy, right? So that means omega, how fast it's uh, doing one cycle, it's gonna be two pi to go around over 50 rad per second. So any sign here is any sign graph easy to find the equation. Is that clear? So if I ask you for that for the final, we you will say easy pi. Okay. Uh, no. Okay, what else is I want to tell you? Yeah, so I try to explain here, the EMF induced is always equals to the number of loops times the change, the rate at which the magnetic field is changing. Okay, the magnetic field is changing, I mean the magnetic flux is changing, delta phi over delta t. So here you do not change the magnetic field, you do not change the area, you do not change the number of loops, you are just changing the orientation of the loop relative to the magnetic field. So that means when the, the loop is it this way, the angle is zero. And then when it's going to tilt that way, that will be the angle here, right? So the angle is changing and you have, that's how you have this equation. Is that clear? So what's the magnetic flux? It's just the number of lines going through the area. And you see that the number of lines going through the area is changing with time. Okay, so it's it's not easy concept, so I, that's why I emphasize that. Here you have a different way to do it. You see the lines here as I go to wall. Is it increasing or decreasing? Like the number of, so you have, you attach an area here, right? As I go in, do you have more lines poking through or less? More lines. And as I move away, less. 
less lines, okay? And if I do that, if I go quicker, I go, you know, more voltage I get, but I get AC. See how it works? So more efficient, we don't do that. We, we use a rotor and it doesn't spin. Oh no, it doesn't spin. It's fine because I know how to make it spin. Here, here, now it's spin. So it's here, it's the same idea, right? I can make the, the, the magnetic field stronger. I'm gonna get more light, weaker, less light. I can increase the area, more light, less light. I can increase the number of loop, more light, decrease the number of loop, less, less light. And if I spin slower, I'm gonna get less light and here I have more light. Okay, so the EMF depends on the number of loop, the magnetic field, how fast it's spinning and the area. Okay, so hopefully that is clear. So that will be the equation for that. Omega is called the angular frequency. It's how fast uh, the conductor is gonna spin inside the magnetic field. We did that last time together, so I'm not going to do it. And I try to improve again my slide. So I hope now it's clear. I try to summarize everything. How can you induce an EMF using the Faraday's law of induction? So that will be the equation. Okay, so you need to change the number of field lines going through the area attached to the conductor. We translate that as the EMF induced will be the number of loop times the rate at which the flux is changing. So you can either change the magnitude of the magnetic field. So in that case, you're going to use that equation, the number of loops times the area times delta B over delta T. Or you can change the area, which will be number of loop times B times the rate at which the area is changing. So if you stretch, while you are stretching here, you're going to induce an EMF, you're going to have an induced current, or you can change the orientation. And that angle here, uh, through which the, that the loop is sweeping through, is called theta. And theta equals omega t, or omega t. Okay, it's the rotation. Like distance is speed times time, the angle swept is the rotational speed times the time. That's how you get that equation. Any question? So last time we talked about the original uh, experiment of Faraday's. So when he turned the switch, so he closed the switch, all of a sudden he was able to see uh, induced voltage here and then nothing. When he opened the switch, induced voltage and nothing. So what's happening? As long as there is a change in magnetic field, scam likely. No, I don't want to answer. So the magnetic field, okay, it's gonna be trapped inside and it's gonna change here and it's gonna induce a voltage. And that was found in the late 19th century. And they use what is called a toroid. I show you that last time we did the demo, so I'm not going to do that again. So that's the idea of a transformer, how you can step up the voltage or step down the voltage. For example, my laptop is 20 volt. I get 120 volt from the power, uh, the grid. So I need to step down. And the way to do that, you, you have to decrease the number of loop. So that's how a transformer works, right? So here we have uh, like, how many loop do you see? One loop. And here we have one, two, three, four loops, say. So that's gonna be a step up transformer. But there is a price to pay because energy has to be conserved. So if you step up the voltage, what what is it that it has to step down? The 
current. Current, right? Because power is uh, V times I. So what does it mean? So how are we going to use that to, to make a transformer? Let's see, new. So we're going to have on one side, we're going to have AC. And then here, we're going to have like, um, we're going to have a toroid, like the one I show you. Usually it's a square. It's like a donut, a square donut. Okay. So for example, here, I'm going to have a loop, 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 loop. And how many loop? N sub 1. And the voltage here is V sub 1. So it's going to induce, it's going to induce a magnetic field inside the donut. The magnetic field is going to flow in one direction and then in the other direction. In one direction and then in another direction. So on the other side, I'm going to have, for example, if I want to step down, I'm going to have less loop. And here you get for your load, for example, maybe you want that for your computer. I don't know, it doesn't look like a computer, but that's your load here. So here you have N2 and the voltage is V2. So the equation is like this, V2 over V1 equals N2 over N1. So if you multiply the number of loops by 10, the voltage is multiplied by 10. If you divide the number of loops by 10, the voltage is divided by 10. The price to pay is that the current has to go down. Right. So the current will work the other way. It's going to be like this. So it means if the voltage goes up, the current has to go down because you have voltage times current has to be a constant. Okay, I I have I have a I found I think I found a uh, I don't know if I a simulation with a transformer. No, I'm sure I have found a transformer simulation. You don't see any transformer. When I type transformer, I see the the cartoon, but it's not exactly what I want. Okay, so that's uh, the idea of a transformer here. So you have two coils. I'm sure I had a simulation. Let's do a problem and, and then... Uh, we try to find, I'm sure I have one somewhere, but I don't know where I placed it. So, okay. So that's the idea of a transformer. Oh, by the way, transformer were developed in the late 19th century. And William Sturgeon is famous to have um, produced them. So you can step up the voltage by a lot, so that's a transformer. You increase the number of loops, you're gonna increase the voltage. And they started to have fun shocking people, okay? Giving um, people big big um, voltage surge. Because it's like, a, it works like a spark plug. You can, you can burp out a huge voltage during a very small amount of time. And um, so when you have a new science, you know, being developed, be aware, be aware. <laughs> Don't trust the expert because um, they, they came up with all kinds of torture for people saying that it was for their all goods. So in the newspaper, you could see something like this, you know, you're going to be, uh, uh, we, we're going to apply a voltage and, and then you're going to be cured from all kinds of disease. Okay. I'm sure they kill people doing that, but um, so be aware. Okay, so why don't you try to do this one? And I'm gonna try to find my transformer. So you, you have the slide, okay? So why don't you try to do it? And I'm, I don't know where I put my transformer, so I'm gonna try to look for it. 
I was so happy. I found, I found it, but I don't know. I don't know where I placed it. But don't, you are not, no one is staring, right? You're doing it? I, I don't know. I know it's somewhere, I don't know where. Ah, look, 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 I found it. I found that yesterday online. Okay, so this is the AC power supply. So current is flowing in one direction and then in the other direction and then in one direction, the other direction. So the magnetic field will be trapped inside that donut. Okay, it's made of steel iron. The magnetic field line cannot escape. So the magnetic field is going to flow in one direction, the other direction, one direction the other direction. On the other side here, you still have a coil, but let's say you have less loop. So you're going to induce, you're going to induce a voltage, which, which makes sense because you are changing the rate of the magnetic field lines going through the area. Okay, so it's the, it's the magnetic field that is changing with time. So you are inducing electricity here. But because the number of loops are is smaller, so you get a smaller voltage. Isn't that a nice animation? It takes me time to find that. It's, it's a very nice one. I'm very proud of myself. Okay, so let's try to do this one. Are you doing it? Don't don't stare, okay? So it's a step down, it's a step down transformer. So primary, so what you do, you do it this way. Okay, so you have AC, okay? And boom, 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 boom. So that's gonna be the primary. And it has 330 turns. So it goes on 330 times. 25 in the secondary. So it means here you have a little bit less. And here you have your load. So N2 equals 25. So that means the voltage will be divided by the ratio between N1 and N2. And then it says uh, the plug connected to the primary coil 120 volts. So it means V1 <laughs> V1 <laughs> equals 120 volts. Now you have to be very careful which one is primary, which one is secondary. And I1 equals 0 0.83. Okay. Find the voltage across the secondary coil. So V sub 2. Okay, so what do you think? So the ratio between the voltage is the same as the ratio between the term, right? Okay, so it means that you have different way to do it, okay? So you can have V V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. So you can do that. So if you do that, what do you get? Yeah, who? who? What's your name? Anthony. Mm? So V2 equals 9, 9 volt, right? AC. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I have to franchise, 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 can you say franchise? Your name. Okay, 9 volt AC. So it means that 3.30, you go to 25, and you go from 120 volt to 9 volt. So you, you divide here, to go from here to here, you divide by the same, same thing, okay? You divide by 3. 30 divided by 25, that's the, by what you're going to divide. Okay, so then number B, I2. Can you find the current? So you have two ways to do it. You can use conservation of energy. So you can do V1I1 equals V2I2 because the power here is the energy per unit second has to be conserved ideally so you can do this way or or you can say i1 over i2 and is equals to n2 over n1 so it's not like the voltage okay it's the opposite for the current you have uh, v2 over v1 equals n2 over n1 but for the current, it's the opposite, okay? You have I2, for example, over I1 equals N1 over N2. Okay, so for the voltage, it's the opposite for the current. That means if the current decreases, the voltage increases. Or, or you can write your uh, this, which is exactly the same. So what do you get? So I1 equals 0 0.83. So we need to get something bigger. What do you get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About 11 amp. Makes sense. If you if you get something smaller than what you start with, that means you did a mistake. If the voltage goes up, the current has to go down. If the voltage goes down, the current has to go up. That's ideal. Of course, you're going to lose energy to heat. And there is a lot of engineering in making good transformer to, um, to limit the loss. Okay, so that's those problems are easy. So what's the average uh, electric power? How can we find the power? So V times I in my head. So P equals uh, 9, for example, times 0 0.83. Let me erase. Can you find the power? You have to be consistent which one you are, okay? Is it is it the primary or is it the secondary? So the power will be, so P equals V1I1, and that should be equals to V2I2. So you have 120 times 0 0.83, if you did everything properly, it should be equals to nine times 11. Okay, and you get a power of about 100 Watt. Okay, so that's how much energy is being transferred from that coil to this one. Okay? You agree? You don't fall asleep? It's it's the time of gloomy time, the weather, gloomy weather when people fall asleep. Crazy. Yeah, it's gloomy. So uh, let's see.
Okay, so transformer is going to be everywhere. So you start from the power plant. Power plant, you're going to make 20,000 volts using, you know, the rotor and the stator. And then you need to step it to 365 or 300,000 volt. Why is that? Because if the voltage is high, the current is small, and it's the current that takes away energy through heat. So you need to lower the current. So to get to have to get to have the same power, you need to increase the voltage. Does it make sense? Because otherwise you will have to buy those very thick cables to decrease the loss in heat, and that will cost too much money. So because they want to save money. So then they increase the voltage, increase the current. And then you get to step down here. I don't know if you know, next to sunny eyes, you have this ugly, you know, next to, uh, what's that bar? You know the bar? You don't drink. Oh, yes, of course you don't drink. <laughs> uh, I forgot. So anyway, next to sunny eyes, you, you have that uh, transformers, right? So you go from 300,000 to 4,000 volt, right? And then when you get to your house, you go from 4,000 volt and you have other transformers step down. Very good. So from here to there, you step down and from here to there, you step down again to 240 volt. And then once you have 240 volt, you can step up again if you need a lot of voltage or step down if you need less voltage so that's how it works are there transformers in the like yeah, yeah no only in the device like uh, attached to the tv so for example if you have the old tv the bulky tv you need to step up to a thousand volt because they work like a crt like the cathode ray tube now the plasma TV, I don't know how much voltage you need. Probably. You can check. Probably less, yes. But I don't know if it's less than 120 or more than 120. It's a good question. We have to check. And then my laptop, for example, I have a trans that that's it's a mod it's a kind of a transformer, so it goes from 120 to 20. And then the charger for your phone, also it's it's electronics. But it's the same principle, it's to step down, so you go from 120 volt to 5 volt, right? Because your phone works with 5 volt. So not only you need to step down the voltage from 120 volt to 5 volt, but you have to go from AC to DC, because your phone doesn't like AC, likes DC, okay? So that's how it works. And a lot of applications with transformer, for example, a Tesla coil somewhere has a transformer here to step up the voltage so you can make a spark. He, he already got the idea with his uh, device how to make uh, wireless technology. But his idea was taken by Marconi, and he's he's the one who get the, all the credit, right? But he really came up first with the idea, and um, sadly he didn't die very rich. So a lot of application for these um, topics here. So for example, you have induction here. You see how it works. So do you think you can, uh, if you have an induction stove? Do you think you can boil water if you use a pot like made of clay or whatever, if it's not metal? No, because you cannot induce current. You cannot induce a voltage. So the way it works, underneath you have a coil, right? The coil will have electricity flowing in one direction, the other direction. So it's going to in induce a voltage in the metal there. Here, it's not going to do anything because there is no magnetic field going for your hand unless you put your hand there. And yes, it's going to be hot because we we we, we are a conductor. So that's how it works. Okay, so underneath you have a coil, you have a magnetic field changing with time and it will induce a current here. Isn't that interesting? So this is called induction. 
induction is each time you have a change in the magnetic field flux that can induce current in a conductor. So for example, there is a very cool video here. So here you have a coil, but uh, you have current flowing in one direction and then in the other direction. So it's going to have a magnetic field inside. So it's going to induce current in this piece of metal there. And it's going to be so hot, you are converting energy that uh, it's going to melt. Isn't that cool? And boom. Right? It's very cool. What do we see in the background? The other. Oh. Okay, so I don't know, is is that uh, around or not? Or it's not a te te technology that has been uh, developed yet. It's the idea is to charge your battery without plugging it. So you will have your car underneath a coil. The coil will uh, induce a current, you know, through the magnetic field. So it will uh, actually, you can think of the coil as a way to transfer energy from one system to the other one. So that could be an idea to charge a, ch a car, which is not very efficient, but it looks good on the slide. Uh, here is another nice uh, application. If you want to find out if there is a, a short somewhere in your house, you have a circuit breaker. And the way it works, you see, if, if there is no leak, so you have electricity leaving the wall and, and electricity coming back, so that will be the hot uh, uh, wire and that's the return path. If there is no leak, what can you say about current one and current two? If, if there is no leakage, if no device has a short circuit, so those two currents should be equal to each other, yes or no? Okay, so if they are equal to each other, they are not going to induce any magnetic field here, right? Because the total current is zero. So you are not going to induce any current there. So there is nothing to detect. However, if there is a short somewhere in one of those electronic uh, appliances, so what's going to happen? You're going to have more two here than you have one. So there, there is a leakage somewhere. So now one plus two is not zero. Okay. So you're going to have a magnetic field in, 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 uh, induced here in that ring that will induce a current in that coil and that you can sense it very easily so you know that there is a, something that goes wrong and the circuit breaker will uh, work, okay? It will open the circuit. Isn't that nice? Is that how breakers and houses work? Yes, the, but the, not, not all of them, those who are more advanced, right? You have the special, you, you can install that in your house if you have kids, for example. So you, you, you add a special plug so, so you know if there is something wrong or not. Okay, Lance law, it's a consequence of conservation of energy. And it means that once you induce a current, the current itself will have its own magnetic field, okay? That will oppose whatever gave rise to. So always against it. So for example, if you bring the magnet in, it's going to say, no, 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 you go too fast. So the induced current will flow in such a way, take your right hand, that the north will oppose north. So you will have to push. It was, it's going to be very hard. And then, and then once you want to do the opposite, so you want to remove the magnet, guess what? You're going to still have an induced current that will flow in the opposite direction to slow you down. So 
whatever you're doing, each time you are inducing voltage, inducing a current, the current will always oppose whatever gave rise to it. It's called Lance Law. So I have I have a demo for you. So you, you see here, can you see the pipe? It's a pipe here with a hole. Can you see through the hole? Can you see over there? So I have aluminium. It's not a magnet. It's not a magnet. And I, I'm going to drop, drop it here. Is that surprising? No, you expect that, right? You expect gravity to do its work. It's uh, pulling on it and it's going down. But now, now I have a magnet. I, I can show you it's a magnet. You see, it's, it's metallic here. It's a magnet. So you expect the magnet to be acted upon by gravity exactly the same way. But look what's going to happen. You see that? No. Isn't that strange? It's, it, it's called Lance Law. It's a magnetic break. So what's happening? The holes are breaking. Not, not the hole. It's the motion of the magnet inside, okay, because there is a motion and there is a magnetic field and there is a conductor. So you're going to have an induced current inside that tube here that will slow it down. Okay, it doesn't like to be induced. You know, you, you go too fast. You induce me? No, no, no. I'm going to fight you. So remember, to have induced current, you need magnetic field. So here is a magnet. You need a conductor. You have an aluminum tube. And you need something to move, a motion. So if I do that, nothing happens. But if I let, let it move, it's going to take forever. This is called Lance Law. So how do we use that? We use that in a magnetic uh, break. So the truck, for example, you, ca you cannot break it like you, you don't have brake like you have for the car. You have magnetic brake. It's more, more efficient. You are inducing current, inducing current that will slow down whatever gave rise to it. It's, um... oops. So let me show you some uh, other demo that I have. So it's called Lance Law. That's why you have a negative sign here in Faraday's law. The negative here stands for the Lance, Lance Law. These currents that you are inducing are called eddy currents. So sometimes they are your friend and sometimes they are not your friend. <laughs> so you see here, you have a pendulum, of course, a pendulum is expected to swing, nothing special about that. But now he's going to put a horseshoe magnet. Boom, stop right away. Boom, stop. So that's how a truck is breaking, okay? It's a magnetic break. But now he takes the same conductor and now it has holes in it. Do you think it's gonna work? No, because the current cannot flow. If if you have gaps here, okay, you introduce a lot of resistance, it's gonna be harder for the eddy current to flow. So it's not going to work. Not working, doesn't work. Isn't that interesting? Wow. So each time you have a conductor moving inside the magnetic field, you will induce current. You will induce a voltage, but that current will fight you, okay? Fight, fight, fight you. Try to slow down whatever gave rise to. Magnetic break here, boom. <laughs> See that? Even, even that, boom.
Do you see how it's it's stopping? Isn't that crazy? Boom! It doesn't even touch it, almost not touching it. So you have eddy current. Um, let's see if I have another one. That's, that's the same that I have, except I go cheap because because I don't have access to the lab, so I don't kind of have access to the material, but it's fine. Iron, no, no problem, gravity, okay, boom. And then he takes a magnet. Same size, takes forever. Wow. Why don't you say wow? It's, isn't, isn't that interesting? Super interesting. So here, that's exactly what you have here in that demo, okay? You are inducing eddy current in that piece of aluminum. And each time you have current flowing, right? You, you're gonna have energy loss to a heat. And that's exactly what's happening there. So there is a, cons uh, a transfer of energy from electrical energy here to heat. And that is done through the magnetic field. So the magnetic field is a way to transfer energy. No, 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 don't do that, please. So here, let's try to do that. Typical question for the final. Ah, I like it. I say final, everyone. Final. So here, nothing happened. It's a conductor and it's falling. And here you have a magnetic field, yes or no? So here, the magnetic field, when it goes from here to there, is it increasing or decreasing? the magnetic field going through that area here. Is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. So you want, so what does the induced current wants to do? Because it's increasing and it has a contradict, uh, it wants to contradict it, right? So if it's, if the magnetic field is increasing, what it wants to do? To decrease it, right? So which way the current has to flow to try to fight the magnetic field. So the magnetic field is going towards you. So the induced current wants to do a magnetic field into the screen, right? So which way it has to flow? Clockwise or counterclockwise? I want to have a magnetic field into the board, into the screen. Clockwise. Okay, so if I ask you for the final, you know, you will know what to do. It's land slow. So here, do you think you have any current? Oh, that's a good pop quiz question. Is there any current flowing here? No, because there is no change in the number of magnetic field lines poking through the area. Now it's leaving. What's happening to the magnetic field lines you have? Very good because it's going to decrease, it gets upset, it wants to do the opposite. So it's going to flow which way? Uh, so it's going to flow, uh, so it's going to be uh, so toward the screen, the thumb is toward the screen, so the induced current will be clockwise. Isn't that amazing? And then nothing, right? So always opposite. Like me, like you tell me to go this way, I'm going to think, oh, he wants me to go this way, I'm going to go that way, it must be better that way. So always the opposite. So here it's the idea behind a magnetic break. So a, a, a big uh, truck or a, a, a train will work with magnetic break. As it's uh, swinging, you're going to induce current, eddy current, they're going to flow in one direction and then the other direction 
and it will stop it. If if you have holes here, it's it's not going to work because eddy current cannot flow. Lot of application. We have seen that the cruiser in your car, you know, the automatic cruiser use cruise control. Thank you. I have a cruise control. So you know what saved me is the beep beep because oh my god without that here in miami i would be already dead like they they're really so dangerous they come close to you i don't know why i i think some some people they are like miami. yeah miami it's very 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 aggressive aggressive drivers getting worse oh yeah you're right you're right including me <laughs> But I'm a good driver. I'm a very slow driver. <laughs> so a lot of application. So that's uh, also okay. So because we are a conductor, do you agree that we are a conductor? So each time you have a magnetic field going through you, and that magnetic field changes with time, you induce current inside you. Okay, you have induced current flowing inside you. We we don't really know what it does to us. So, for example, with all those electromagnetic waves, you know, in space, there is nothing you can do. It goes through your body. So you have magnetic field all the time going through your body, changing with time. And of course, it's going to induce current. You're going to have induced current. So they say those current induced will be very, very small and it doesn't do anything. I don't know, that's what they say. But you, you have, for example, uh, here you have like uh, some technology where, where they claim that if you induce current, for example, in your brain, so th that's, that's what they do here. You see, you have a magnetic field. They, they want to make, so you have a loop. You see a loop of current, you have a magnetic field. They, they have that magnetic field changing with time. It goes through your brain. So it's gonna induce those uh, eddy current. And um, it's supposed to do something good. I don't know what it does. TMS, therapeutic potential in the central nervous system with a wide variety of disease. Okay, but that's the physics behind it. You also have therapeutic uh, that use electromagnetic waves to, um, to cure. There is research done about that. I don't know if there is a lot of research done because that would be very bad for uh, big pharma if uh, if you just use electromagnetic waves. But I, I I I I don't know if it works or not. So you can look it up. But that's certainly interesting. Here's another thing that is interesting. You have electric generator, electric motor, and they are just the 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 symmetry. So I show you that in a demo, right? So you have current. If you have current, you, you, you're you going to have a motor. Or if you turn here, you can produce electricity. So that's what you find in power plants. You have large uh, scale power plants. It would be 100,000 volts. You have coals here. Or you can do it by hand. If you go camping and you don't have any battery with you, you can just crank, right? So you move a magnet inside the coil and you can produce electricity. You can even store electricity if you have a battery. You can charge your battery. Airport security also works the same way. So let's say someone has a weapon, goes through the gate. What's going to happen? It's going to... You're going to create a magnetic pulse, right? A magnetic pulse. That magnetic pulse will induce current in the weapon if that person were a weapon. Okay, so the induced current in the weapon will create its own magnetic field that will fight the, the, magnetic, the, the primary magnetic field and that will be uh, sensed by, by sensor. If there is no weapon, there won't be any induced current, so there won't be any secondary magnetic field, and that means you have no weapon. But that works only with a metallic weapon, right? So if you have, I don't know, a 3D weapon, like a 3D uh, printer weapon, maybe it's not going to work. 
here is another application. You can uh, induce a current in a car, okay? And so that will, uh, so that way they know how many cars are going through. So it, it can be controlling the traffic here. So a lot of application, of course, in your car, if you have a car with a gasoline, you're going to use a spark plug, and that comes from the coil as well. Is that clear? Any question? Okay, so shall we start a new thing? So the new, new unit is very cool. You're going to like it because I designed it just for students in health and, and biology. So a lot of application here. So we're going to talk about electromagnetic waves. So first, how do we make a wave? So let me, electromagnetic wave. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's see. I'm going to increase oscillate. So somewhere you are broadcasting, so you're going to have an antenna. So you're going to have an electron here that will start to oscillate. Because it's oscillating, do you remember the electric field with the Van Graaf generator, do you remember the Van Graaf generator? It's going to change the space around and it generates an electric field, right? It's called the static electric field. But imagine this is kind of a fabric here in space, it's in 3D. Imagine you grab your Van Graaf generator and you start to shake it like this. What's going to happen to those lines here? Okay, so they're gonna to shake too, right? So and but it's 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 gonna take time for that point to know that you are shaking something. So the disturbance has to move at a given speed, the speed of light. So what you have to imagine is that electric field is gonna shake, like very much like you take a slinky and you shake. You're going to make a wave that will move at a given speed. So an electric field can move in space at a, at the speed of light. So if I go back to here, I'm going to shake that electron here. If you shake it, do you see how I'm going to shake an electric field here? And here I have another antenna at the end. I'm trying to shake the electron, but I'm not very successful because I don't have the right frequency. It's like when you turn on the radio, right? You need to have the right frequency. So I'm going to make it oscillate like this. That would be much better. So the electric field is changing with time. Here it's going to up and down. And now this one is shake, shaking. So now... Because that electron is shaking in my antenna, I'm producing electricity here at the same frequency that I am broadcasting. So I can uh, I can listen to the sound. Okay, isn't that cool? So we can uh, let's see full sign. Okay, that's what it really looks in three dimension. So it's really an electric field shaking everywhere. And here at the other side, you're detecting that electric field signal. It's carrying a sound, for example. So let me ask you something. If you have a changing electric field, if you have a changing electric field, right? It's like having electricity. It's going to induce what? Changing electricity. So you have a changing electric field. Imagine you have electricity flowing back and forth. A magnetic field, very good, a magnetic field. And if you have a changing magnetic field, it's going to induce a 
the current, an electric field, right? Current is because you have an electric field. The electric field is going to induce a electric field will induce a magnetic field. The magnetic field will induce a electric field. The electric field will induce a magnetic field. And at the end, it will induce a current. At the end, it will induce a current. That's that's why it's called an electromagnetic wave. Very good. Excellent. Because they induce each other. They, they auto-generate each other. Only right? Oh, only when it's changing with time. So changing electric field here, so you have electricity going up and down, it will induce an electric field that will induce a magnetic field that will induce an electric field that will induce a magnetic field that will induce a magnetic field that will induce an electric field and so forth and so on. And it's moving in space, doesn't need air at the speed of light. So that's what an electromagnetic wave is. Okay, it's an uh, auto generating electric field, magnetic field, electric field, uh, magnetic field, and so forth and so on. So yes, so electromagnetic uh, spectrum here, all these are electromagnetic waves. Everything here moves at the speed of light. Okay, all of them they behave exactly the same way. All of them they have a magnetic field and electric field inducing each other out, except that which one is dangerous, the right side here or the left side? Right, right side, gamma ray, because they have high frequency, high energy, small wavelength. So what does it mean to have a small wavelength for the wave? It means it can get through you. Okay, the wavelength here is so small, you see you have a very, very small wavelength, it will get through you. It won't be even stopped by your bones. Okay, that's how we get a, get a PET scan, because the PET scan is made of gamma rays. Gamma rays have such a small wavelength that it can see very, very small uh, um, tissue inside, so it has a very good resolution, but of course it can destroy at the same time. So if you are exposed to too much gamma rays, the wavelength is so small that it will destroy your cell because the cell, human cell, I know is my, micro, and this one is so much smaller that it will destroy it. And then you have gamma uh, X-ray. X-ray is still dangerous stuff, still high frequency, small wavelength. So it will get through you but it will be stopped by your bones because the bones have calcium. Calcium are big nucleus that will stop the X-ray wavelength. Yes, some of them will, so that will be back X-ray. Otherwise it will, the, the one that goes for the bones, just to see the bones, they just go through and then, and then you see the shadow of the bones, right? And then you have UV, still bad because it can go in, in your skin. Visible is safe, visible light. And as you go this way, it's kind of safe. You increase the wavelength, you decrease the frequency, and you decrease the energy. The relationship is the speed of light. And they all go at the speed of light equals the frequency of the wave times the wavelength. So if I try to trick you and say gamma rays, right, they go faster than visible light, you're going to say, no, they all have the same speed. And they all work the same way. You have an electric field that induces a magnetic field that induces an electric field that induces a magnetic field. So each time you have a wave, something has to shake. What is shaking? Electric field, magnetic field, electric field, magnetic field, electric field, and so forth and so on. Did I lose you? Are you still with me? Okay. So just a parenthesis here, any wave has a wavelength, right? That will be the size of your cycle, for example. So if you take a picture at a given time, that's going to be the wavelength. 
and it has a frequency, it means you are at a position here, how fast is going up and down in one second, that will be the frequency. So wavelength is a picture in time, and the frequency is one location, you don't move from your location, and you see the wave is going up and down. Okay, so I will show you that app next time. Electromagnetic wave or light. Sometimes it will behave like a wave. Sometimes it will behave like a particle. So sometimes it's called a particle wave. So, already, so for example, here, you see the electricity produce magnetic field. So you have you can have an antenna here, it will produce a magnetic field that will produce an electric field that will produce a magnetic field and so on and so forth. So what is an electromagnetic wave? It's a wave made of two components. It has an electric field changing with time and it has a magnetic field changing with time. And they both move at the speed of course of light any electromagnetic wave have the same speed and if you are not moving if you are at that location here you see it's going to increase decrease and inc decrease increase decrease increase and it's moving at the speed of light is that clear that's an electromagnetic wave now you have also antenna to detect your wave. So for example, here you have a loop antenna. You see the magnetic field arrives. So it's gonna go through that loop here. So it's gonna induce a current. Once the current is induced, you can have an amplifier here and you can listen to the music, which is carried by that electromagnetic wave. You can have a, 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 an antenna this way. So in that case, you are detecting the electric field. So the electric field is coming. It's going to shake the electron here. Remember, an electric field can shake electron in the antenna. So it's going to have a current flowing in one direction. The other direction is going to induce a voltage here, and you can amplify. So you can have two kinds of antenna. You can have one antenna to detect the electric field or an antenna to detect the magnetic field. So that will be the speed of light. So that the speed of light is 300, uh, 300 in my head, million meter per second. It's a big number. Or 186 thousands miles per second. It's a big number, but it's finite. So when I look who is in the back of the class, Eliana. So I see Eliana. Okay, but the image of Eliana takes time to get to me. So actually, I don't see Eliana like she's now. I see her like she was a few billionth of a second ago. After image, very good. So, you, for example, she 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 is gonna see her sooner than I'm seeing her. So, if she was to disappear, I will not know after a few billions of a second, right? So, I I see her in the past. I see her in the past. She she maybe she's gone. No, she's still here. I think, right? Isn't that amazing? You cannot see someone like she, that person is now. You also always see that person like she was before, in the past. You always see in the past. Is that, is that how those like, telescopes work based off viewing suns and like other galaxies? So the, the sun takes, the light from the sun takes eight minutes to reach us. So you see the sun as it was. Eight minutes. Eight minutes ago, isn't that weird? So if the sun was to disappear, right? It would be very bad for us. We'd be all dead because it would be too cool. We will have be frozen. But how how, how many how much time we will have to live? 
eight minutes to hug each other and to say bye. Right? So it's very Would strange. You die for the moment, though? No, if if it disappears right away, you still have light coming toward us, right? So we still have eight minutes to to leave and then bye. Die instantly if the sun just like ah, that's a good question. That's, that's a, what I'm asking. That's a biology professor to ask that will uh, like if if you if you take yourself and you I mean sh shove someone in the freezer can can that person live very long? I don't know because it will be very very cool without the sun, right? It will be the the same temperature as in space. So I don't know how long it would take us to live. Isn't that interesting? So, for example, we have a huge galaxy here. It's called Andromeda Galaxy. And it's uh, 2.5 million light years away. So, light years is a unit of distance. It means that it took 2.5 million years for the light from that galaxy to reach us. So, we see the galaxy like it was. Exactly. And if you have someone in that galaxy looking at us, it's not seeing us like we are now, it's seeing whatever was going on on Earth 2.5 million years ago. If it's something 65 million light years away from us, that person will see the dinosaurs, right? L looking at us. No? Right? The balloon? <laughs> yeah, I guess. You you know, there was an interesting story. I, I don't know if it's part of that, uh, if I will talk about it or not. It, the, the, the Roswell, you know the UFO with Roswell? So the, the real story, it, it has been unclassified, but it was classified for a very long time. It was the, um, the army. The army was spying on the Soviet Union, right? Because it was the Cold War. So they, they had a balloon. Okay, I'm not kidding. It was kind of a balloon with a, some kind of microphone. And, and they were listening to the Soviet Union trying to detect a um, blast of, of a hydrogen bomb. Okay, they were, wanted to know if they, they were doing the bomb or, or doing some some um, explosion. So they were spying on them. And I will explain how it was done. But one day that, that balloon crashed, right? So people saw a balloon crashing and, and they let the rumor go that it was a UFO because they didn't want the, the people to know what goes going on, right? So in the news, they say, oh, Roswell, there was a UFO crashing. It, it was not true, but it uh, served the interest of the army because it didn't want, of course, the Soviet or, or the spy, Russian spy to know about that, isn't it? So don't ask me what happened with the Chinese balloon because I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. The, the, the story with the white, uh, like the, the Chinese balloon, like... Uh, it's very strange over Alabama. Have you, was it Alabama or Montana? Montana, right? I don't know. Like you, you see a balloon in Montana, you don't see, the Canadians don't see them, the, the people in California don't see them, and Hawaii, they don't see them, Montana, they see it, I don't know. It's very strange, I have no idea. But but the, the UFO story is a, is a true story. Okay, so that will be the electromagnetic spectrum, right? So as you go this way, what's happening to the wavelength? Does it increase or decrease? Increasing. But what's happening to the frequency? Decreasing, right? So it's uh, inversely proportional. So let's, let's do some, just one problem here. A gamma ray, the wavelength is 10 to the negative Four nanometer. Can you find the frequency? So this one here. So the relationship is the speed. It's the speed. The speed is, remember physics one, it's a distance divided by the time. 
The distance here is the wavelength in meters, so that will be a wavelength. Unit is meters, and here you have the time, and that's going to be in second. So one over the time, it's one over the period, and one over the period is also the frequency. So speed of a wave equals the wavelength in meters times the frequency. The frequency is in hertz. Or, or frequency, the unit is hertz or one over second, right? So the speed of light, because all electromagnetic waves, they have the same speed, equals to the wavelength times the frequency. So that's the equation you want to use. So if the wavelength goes down, the frequency goes up, and the energy goes up. So example, wavelength equals 10 to the negative 4 nanometer. Can you, can you find the frequency? So nano means 10 to the negative 9, right? Uh, divided by 10 to the negative you sure did you, did you do 10 to the negative 9 here nano means 10 to the negative 9 right so that's going to be 10 so when you see nano it's like a sticker here, and you replace it by 10 to the negative 9. So 10 to the negative 13 meters, right? So the frequency equals 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 10 to the negative 13. So the frequency equals 3 times 10 to the... So misplaced base, you move the exponent up, so minus become plus. So that's going to be 21, thank you, hertz. Any question? So why is it 21? Uh, uh, because uh, 13 plus 8. Right? Okay, let's try another one. Let's let's try uh, ten kilometer. Ten kilometers. So the wavelength, it's a radio wave. Ten kilometer. So you take your equation sheet and you see kilo means ten to the third, micro ten to the negative six, milli ten to the negative three. Nano, 10 to the negative 9. Centi, 10 to the negative 2. Uh, mega, 10 to the 6. So you just take this one like it's a sticker. And you go 10 times 10 to the third meters. So that's a 1. That's going to be 10 to the 4. So the frequency equals, so that's going to be what? 3 times 10 to the 5? Why 5? Did I do a mistake? Why 5? Because it's 3 plus 1 is 4. So it's going to be 3 to the uh, 8, no, uh, 4 hertz. 
Okay? That's how you do it. So, conclusion, an electromagnetic wave, you have magnetic, so it means there is a magnetic field inside. There you have electric, so that means there is an electric field inside. And the way it works is that the electric field here is inducing a magnetic field here that will induce an electric field that will induce a magnetic field that will induce a magnetic field and na 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 and na 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 and na 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 and na 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 and that moves at the speed of light. Okay. 